Developing and maintaining an analytics dashboard can be painful. While the data lifecycle can be well engineered for data ingestion and transformation, analytics dashboard tools aren't necessarily created with this in mind. These are user interfaces with extensive clinking involved that can lead to a higher risk of human error and provides fewer engineering options. The emergence of BI as code tools addresses long-standing challenges that we have in this field. They enable to create beautiful analytics dashboard while still embracing software engineering best practices. In this video, we'll first understand why this trend of BI as code is happening, and then we'll cover three of these tools evidence, real, and streamlit. We will also understand why DuckDB plays actually a crucial role in this new paradigm of BI as code. So let's get started. What? So before diving into the different tools, let's take a step back to understand why such a tools are popping up. Well, data engineering has seen significant advancement, yet the rest of the analytics chain often hasn't kept pace. And typically, business and analytics users extract data from data warehouse and build their dashboard using UI tools such as Tableau, Power BI, Excel, you name it. And what's the issue with that? Well, they were designed with a user interface first focus to lower the technical barrier to entry, which is great. However, this approach can lead to increased technical debt. For instance, how do you roll back a new UI dashboard or prevent it from breaking? At the end of the day, the dashboard that presents your KPI is a software asset too. And that means it must go under testing, be appropriately versioned, and exist in various environments, including staging and production during its development stages. So let's consider what some new tools offer today along with their advantages. Remember, the choice is yours. But they all share some common features. They are open source native, cloud-based service for hosting, and BI as code approach, meaning you can version, test it through a standard CI pipelines, and they all have compatibility with both DuckDB and ModderDuck. And by the way, if you're not familiar yet with DuckDB, I would recommend you checking first our video on DuckDB introduction. You will feel more comfortable with the rest of this video. So let's first understand at a higher level what those three tools brings to the table. First, Evidence, SQL, and Markdown. So Evidence is a lightweight JavaScript framework designed for building data apps using Markdown and SQL. You simply construct your dashboard using existing components and then incorporate them using SQL within your Markdown and your all set. The end product is a static website that can be hosted anywhere. Versal, Netify, or Evidence Cloud. Real, SQL plus YAML. Real by Real Data allows you to create a dashboard using only SQL and YAML files. They offer a convenient CLI to run it locally and using a local web UI to draft queries and dashboards or for deploying on their cloud. And here is a fun fact, Real is actually built using DuckDB. I'll put also that blog in the description if you're interested. Streamlit, Python. Streamlit has been in the market for quite a few years and was acquired by Snowflake in 2022. The primary advantage and possibly the disadvantage of Streamlit is that it allows you to stay within your Python data workflow. It uses the same ecosystem to develop your data apps. So that means you build your data apps with Python and you need, at the end of the day, a Python runtime for hosting. So how are these quacking? So why DuckDB and ModderDuck is interesting into this BI as a code movement? Well, DuckDB is an embedded database, which is great for local analytics. It's super easy to install and it enables you to lower the development loop as you can basically do everything locally, building your dashboard and then push everything to the cloud when you are ready to share, which is something that is a bit hard with classic dashboarding tools are they mostly relying on cloud databases for data and cloud SaaS service for the BI tool. All the dashboard that we are going to build can be run locally without any cloud dependency. All right, so what are we going to build? Yes, we'll do the same dashboard using PyPI statistics data on the Python package of the B. And yes, I double check how to pronounce actually PyPI. For each project, we're gonna check it up, the setup, the project structure and connection to DuckDB or MotherDuck, creating data visualization, 
and finally the deployment. And again, feel free to check out the source code link in the description to the GitHub repository. Evidence. So to quickly start an evidence project, as we just saw earlier, you essentially need to copy a JavaScript template. And you can do this either by using Node.js and the Digit package or their container image using the dev container feature from VS Code. So this will install the node models and run a local server. So let's understand the project structure and connection to DuckDB. There are essentially three main important parts in the project that has been generated. The dot evidence, which is evidence configurations and pages where we're gonna write our markdown and SQL. And finally, evidence.plugins.yaml, which is to configure evidence plugins. Once the local server is running, you can connect to DuckDB to the UI setting page. For a local DuckDB database, you will just need to provide the path and the extension. For a mother duck database, you will need to specify your mother duck token. The mother duck token can be easily retrieved from the web application if you have an account already. Otherwise, just create an account. It's pleasingly fast. So creating visualization. So what evidence do is rendering markdown files into web page. And when developing the markdown file, for example, at page slash example.md is going to be rendered at localhost slash example. Evidence as a collection of components that you can check out on their website to build your dashboard. You then define your SQL query attached to these components. For instance, here I have a big value, which is just big numbers. And this is the query I'm running, which is the total sum of the download of the PyPI packages from DuckDB. And that would display this big insane number. That sum up how you can create your components. And of course, there is much more to it, such as reusing SQL queries, templating, filtering, but I'll let you dive more into their documentation. Let's talk about the deployment. So when you generate a static website, you have the flexibility to host it anywhere that support JavaScript static website. So Evidence also provides its own cloud service called Evidence Cloud to streamline the deployment process from local to production. But you can also use Netify or Versal for hosting. All right, let's talk about Real now by Real Data. So for the setup, Real provides a command line interface, which is essentially a binary written in Golang. So it's pretty straightforward and there is a single command line that execute the installation for you. Once this CLI is installed, real should be available in your terminal. To start a new fresh project, you can do real start my real project. And when you start the project, it will launch a local server. And when you browse to the page, you will see this. You have multiple examples that you can click and this will generate automatically for you YAML and SQL file example for this specific topic. You can click on any of those examples and it will generate YAML and SQL files attached to this specific example. So let's look at the folder structure. You have essentially three main parts, the dashboard, the model, and the sources. In sources, you define any supported source from real using YAML. Models will contain your SQL query that will be used in your dashboard. And dashboard is where you specify your metrics in YAML. You can also edit this through the real UI. Coming back to our PyPI stats use case, since we have a DuckDB database containing the data, we can proceed as follows. And we start our project, we do real start, the name place of the project, and we pass a flag DB where the path of our DuckDB database is. And to connect to ModerDuck, you would need to export the ModerDuck token as an environment variable and more information on how to connect to Mother Deck in the description. There is a small workaround to do as of now, meaning the release of this video. It won't be displayed as a source table in the real UI, however, we can still query it in the model part. So here I just have a simple query that gets my table containing the data. So now that I have this, we can now define some metrics in our model dashboard.yaml. The overall goal of Real is to provide you with a tailored, opinionated dashboard based on the metrics you want to see, rather than offering an endless collection of shards that you have to construct yourself. The deployment is done to Real Cloud offering. You use the CLI to publish your code on their cloud. 
It's also worth to mention that compared to the other solutions, Reel offer user access management out of the box. All right, let's go to Streamlit. So for someone familiar with Python, getting started with Streamlit is really simple. All you need is a Python environment and common packages like Streamlit, DuckDB, Pandas, and here Matplotlib for the data visualization. And running the app is pretty straightforward. You just execute Streamlit, run, and target your Python file. For the project structure and the connection to DuckDB, it's also straightforward. You have the freedom to structure your Python application as you see fit. However, for beginners, everything can be contained into a single script. And connecting to DuckDB or MotherDuck is the standard Python way. So I would refer you to either our getting started video guide or MotherDuck documentation. But basically, quickly for local, connect to our IPI stats DuckDB database, you just use the following. You import DuckDB, create a connection, and you specify the path of your DuckDB database. And finally, to connect to MotherDuck, you will have to add your token. So creating visualizations. So Streamlit offer a vast array of components, including interactive features for audio, video, or LLMs, among others. We are only scratching the surface here. The library is pretty big. The general strategy involves using a Panda data frame. And in our case here, we're going to use the built-in chart uh, from Streamlit. So let's build the Pandas data frame first. And as you can see, DuckDB supports natively conversion of result to Pandas data frame. So pretty straightforward to get that up running. And here is our first chart. It's a line graph of number of the loads over time. And as you can see, I'm just passing to this chart object a Pandas data frame with a group by. All right, let's talk about the deployment. So Streamlits offer a community cloud where you can deploy your application for free. Since it's a Python app, it can work on any Python runtime that allows you to expose a web server. All right, it's time to wrap up. So we have explored three different tools that each offer a unique approach to BI as code. You can conduct all tests locally and use Git for version control and CICD for testing and deployment. Your dashboard can easily be deployed or rolled back all while embracing software best practices. So BI doesn't have to be a tedious, click through, expensive UI. And it's really refreshing to see new perspective. Even if those tools are still in the early stage, they show great promise. That's it for today. Keep coding, keep quacking.